Hi, I'm Nathan Oakley, and it has come to my attention that uh, one of our opponents on the heliocentric side of this argument feels he can debunk the second law of thermodynamics. Now, maybe in his mind, he thinks he's going to get a Nobel Prize for this, or maybe even an Ig Nobel Prize for something that seems stupid, but is actually quite interesting. Realistically, I think this guy is absolutely idiotic. There's no way that this high school teacher is ever going to falsify the second law of thermodynamics. So, conspiracy cats, just a gentle reminder that you are only worthy of a certificate of stupidity because there is no way on God's green earth you are ever going to falsify the second law of thermodynamics. But I will re-ask the question, as you seem to be embarking on a personal attack mission against myself rather than simply answering a question which you have already backed our assertion on. Now, what Nathan is saying is you can't have pressure without a container. Without the balloon, these air particles aren't going to be striking anything. Therefore, there is no pressure. So, conspiracy cats, the question, as ever, how do you have gas pressure without a container? For those not in the know, the reason for this question is fairly simple. Earth, if you believe you live on a sphere, is an open system. You can leave. Matter can leave. Rockets can leave. Gas can leave. It's definitely an open system. But, if it's an open system, how do you have gas pressure? The necessary antecedent for gas pressure is a container, as detailed by Conspiracy Cats. So, Conspiracy Cats, bum boy, it's time for you to do one of two things. Accept that your model of Earth is complete nonsense, a contradiction in terms, or falsify the second law of thermodynamics. How do you have gas pressure without a container. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video.